Good morning, Sin City, and welcome to another episode of the Las Vegas Social Media Show right here on the Social Network Station. Today we have two very special guests, Charity Faith and Charles Ressler from First Friday. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. No, it's a pleasure. Could you tell us what First Friday is for the people that don't know here in Las Vegas? Well, First Friday is one of the largest arts festivals in the West, number one. Uh, we get about 25,000 people per month. It happens every First Friday of the month. And it's a festival celebrating local art, local food, local music, and culture. Wow, very cool. I was there last Friday, and it's just amazing how it's just grown and the amount of people and the amount of things that are there to experience. It's, yeah. It's, it's incredible. Did you see the flash mob ballet? I did. And I captured it. I got some of that on film. Yes. Yeah, that was yes, awesome. I did. Because I'm like, what, th- what is going on? It was like, <laughs> like, kind of like this real dubstep type music or whatever it was. And then it was like ballet going on with a huge circle of people. It was so cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Kind of random, but it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what exactly do you do for First Friday, Charles? Um, mostly communications, um, brand experience, how we communicate what we do, how we do it, logistical things to the community so that we can make it as easy and fun for them to come as possible. How did you get involved in it? Uh, I met the managing partner in an elevator. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Meant to be. Meant to be. Very nice. I had said, um, I've been meaning to reach out to you. And he said, reach. <laughs> and got off the elevator. <laughs> so that's how it went down. And the rest is history. Yeah, the rest is history. Very nice. Charity, how about you? How did you, you get involved with First Friday? Um, I got involved with First Friday kind of on, it was almost kind of a, I guess, a mistake. Serendipity. Um, yeah, it Ser- was serendipity, <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> um, basically, I had met uh, Joey, um, Joey Vanis, and he invited me to come to uh, a First Friday event. And um, he actually told me to not bring anybody and to just come by myself and, um, I came and they walked me around. It was actually my first time to First Friday. I believe I made so. her hopscotch in six inch heels. That's actually correct. Wow. I was wearing. Should have yeah. got that on film. We, we did. We did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that exists. <Yeah. laughs> Well, I had I had met Charles the night before, but um, he comes up and and uh, I had just gotten there to First Friday, and he goes, "Who wants to play hopscotch?" And I was like me <laughs> and so he uh takes me on this course and it was the longest hopscotch course i had ever done but i found out later that he had actually made it himself so i was like this is my new bff right. for sure <laughs> hopscotch that's a fun game I can't, I can't remember the last time i played but if someone called it out like that i hey i'll, I'll play some hopscotch well Why it was not? like it was like totally fun it was it was very like delivering happiness type of vibe i mean you you jump around and whatever but you land on these little spots in between each hopscotch and um it tells you to do something like do a silly dance or hug yourself and it was very cute very cool. i loved very it cool. <laughs> now, can you guys give us a little bit of background on how first friday started and i know you know the whole downtown movement what's going on and where it's at now like how did, how did it how did it start Well, about um, almost 11 years ago, coming in October, uh, a group of citizens downtown from the 18B district, which is the arts district, uh, got together and decided that they wanted a space for local artists to be able to showcase their work. And that was Cindy Funkhauser, that was Rick Dees, who's actually still on the team and has only missed one event in all those years. And they started building this event. And there was some pushed back from the community at certain points throughout those years. And eventually, uh, in the ninth year, First Friday decided that they were going to stop doing what they were doing. And a group of very concerned citizens uh, decided that we couldn't let this go away for the community and decided to step in, buy the trademark, and build it again. So it went dark for about one month and then restarted again in the iteration that you see today. So definitely the peop- it was something the people wanted to keep going, and that, that's pretty cool that they stepped up and when it fell and as a community tried to bring it back like that. Absolutely, yeah. No, definitely. Now, what can one expect to see at a First Friday? We know about Flash Mob Ballet. <laughs> that's one thing, hopscotch, but there's just so many cool food, music, art, you name it. So what someone that hasn't been before, what can they expect to see? Well, there's really something for everyone. We have 120 artists, 30 food vendors. Um, each month there's an educational component. So our, 
we will have a theme for the month. This past month was Rite of Spring, which was a ballet that premiered in 1908, uh, choreographed by Nijinsky and composed by Stravinsky. And a lot of people don't know the story, but uh, during that time, the choreography and the music was so avant-garde that it caused a riot. Wow. And we decided that in 2013, especially in Vegas, which people kind of associate with debauchery, certainly not with culture, that we would celebrate the art of performance. And hence the flash mob ballet. Ha- uh, we had some dragon dances, lion dances, kung fu demonstrations. Other performers just started popping up in the streets. I noticed that. Just yeah. Randomly. Yeah. Just random throughout the entire event. There was this major performance component. The month before, our theme was sustainability. And throughout the entire event, there were gigantic art installations that talked about, you know, how much water do you use in a 10-minute shower? And the answer is uh, over 25 gallons. So we had a giant bathtub with a shower and 25 gallons of water jugs uh, and things like that throughout the entire event. So you can expect the unexpected. There's always some component that's pretty mind-blowing, and we usually top it every single month. I think Charity would agree. Um, Lots of family fun. Uh, free art classes for kids from yeah. very famous Disney fine artists. For adults, you can do social paintbrush. Oftentimes, we'll have free yoga classes. Sounds so amazing. you can do really, really interesting things there and um, learn, which is really important. Yeah, you educate. And going back to the kids, so there's like a complete kid zone. Correct. Where kids were performing music and things yep. they could do. And Boys and Girls Club is always out there okay. doing something phenomenal. Um, we had a pet adoption this past month. Sometimes we have a petting zoo. Directly across the street is the Green Street, which is where you can learn about environmental initiatives, meet like-minded people who care about the environment. There's a bike valet, um, organic juice bar. Organic uh, juice. Where was that at? That's at Green Street. Okay. So that's at California and Casino Center. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. And growing. So every month we're growing, which is pretty amazing. That's it's incredible. And uh, Charity, I know you've been on the show before and we talked about you know, some may think there's lack of culture in Vegas, but I remember you telling me when you discovered First Friday, you're like, wow, there's just so much here. Could you give me a little take on that, your perspective, what's going on? Um, I've I've been heavily involved in, you know, the nightlife industry and, and all of the, I guess, sparkle of, of Las Vegas for so long. And um, I... I didn't know what was really lacking in my life until I actually went to a First Friday event. I had been invited to First Friday um, several times before and had never gone um, just for several reasons. Um, just it, Friday nights are very busy for somebody in the nightlife industry. Absolutely. And so, you know, was never really had the opportunity. Um, and honestly, I thought that First Friday was a bar hop experience. I had no idea that it was an entire community um, arts cultural festival at all. I had no idea. Um, when I went down there, I was just blown away. I was like, this is exactly what I've been needing. I just didn't realize that that was what it was or that's what was lacking. Um, You know, growing up in Hawaii, you have so much family around all the time. And even those that aren't your family, they they act very family-like in Hawaii. Everybody hugs everybody and, you know, you're just a community. Um, But out here, it's such a different lifestyle and um, never knew that these amazing people existed or that this that there was culture in Las Vegas and that it was being developed and, and I guess what maintained or, um, that it was developing. Um, and so when I discovered it, I was definitely really excited about it. Um, I feel a little bit more, um, I guess I, I feel happier about the decision that, that I have stayed here with my eight year old daughter. And, you know, I do feel a little bit more comforted now. There's hope. Yeah, there's right. hope for the, this city, I, I think, now that I've, you know, discovered First Friday. And that's from one day in a month. Like, you know, to, to go to an event like that and experience all of that within a few short hours. And, you know, the opportunity that I had to be toured around was, was very unique. It's not something that, that they always do um, and just tour people around and show them exactly, you know, why they do this. But um, for some reason, I was given that opportunity and um, I just knew I had to get involved and I, I needed to give back to this community. I feel like I've, you know, lived the sparkly side of, right. of Las Vegas for a very long time and, you know, to get be grounded again, I guess, and, and find a little bit of culture and community and find really good 
kind-hearted people that are willing to give back into this community. I think you hit it on the head. There is a lot of good, kind-hearted people here. Like everyone says, oh, it's Vegas. There's no one good there. But come to First Friday and your, your eyes will really be open to what good's coming out. And it is once a month, so it's like the full moon and the werewolf. But in a, it's a good <laughs> werewolf that comes out all the good people. Now, we are a social media show. And I'm curious to know, how is First Friday using social media right now to get the word out, to interact uh, with the fans? Can you elaborate a little bit on that, Charles? Sure. Um, well, I mean, each social media channel is going to drive a different type of strategy. So with Facebook, um, I guess some people are of the mind that you jab, 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 right hook. Uh, that's a <laughs> Gary Vaynerchuk idea. For us, I think um, we're much more of like a one or two posts a day, something really educational, uh, and also being able to sort of message out promoting of local artists and different local businesses. With Twitter, I'd say that we really are engaging the community in conversation around different things. Um, whether it's we're sh highlighting a gallery that's in the arts district or pushing out a sponsor's message that is community driven or just talking about why we love art or why we do what we do or the importance of community. I think our Twitter strategy is much more conversational. There's a lot of listening going on within that platform. Um, and Instagram, obviously. Our Instagram strategy is different than any other Instagram strategy I've seen because the nature of our event is that it happens once a month. And we find that we don't really get a ton of engagement when we Instagram throughout the month, but we get insane amounts of engagement day before day of and following so it's almost like people wait with bated breath to see what we're going what the images are going to be what first Friday is going to look like and so the Instagram strategy is much more like in the moment and that's pretty much the social media we're using we obviously don't use LinkedIn because uh, we're not corporate we're not hiring right. everything's kind of volunteer based and um, it may be in the future as we grow and the Twitter feed was definitely blowing up yeah. <laughs> on Friday. It was Actually, crazy. from Tuesday to Friday, we um, had 500 new followers, wow. which in my experience, and I've done social media for Bergdorf Goodman, a couple of casinos. I, I've never seen 500 followers in, in four days. That's incredible. And that's interesting how with you guys, it's kind of unique because it's more you guys are giving good content throughout the month. Nothing crazy. Not overwhelming people, but as you get closer, you just start seeing it start to spike, kind of yeah. like the anticipation and have it build up. The other thing is that for sponsors, um, we, I mean, our event is not financially driven, but somehow it has to be put on every month. So there is a financial and fiscal need there. And for our sponsors, the sponsors that come out really care about community deeply. Otherwise, they're not going to use their dollars. They could just as easily advertise somewhere where they really know like this is the impressions, but they're saying they, they want to tell their story. They want to be a part of the community and they want to show that they're community leaders. And so to be able to push out the messages of our sponsors in a way that's engaging and unique and also see the kind of um, interaction that they get because the community sort of believes in them automatically because exactly. they believe in First Friday. That's been a really interesting thing to watch. So tell me about sponsorship. If I'm a business here in town or anyone that wants to help sponsor First Friday, what are the steps and what all do they get with that sponsorship? Well, please reach out to me at charles at firstfridaylasvegas.com or you can reach out to Nicole with N-I-C-H-O-L-E at firstfridaylasvegas.com and just send us an email letting us know that you're interested. Some interesting statistics about our sponsors is that um, an average sponsor will get up to $1.1 million per month in PR value that they would buy in ad spend. It's incredible. So, yeah, that's pretty staggering. Also, 10,000 engaged Facebook users that care if you're sponsoring this community event, it's over 6,000 Twitter users. Um, the value is pretty amazing. And I think community members really start to feel like you're not pushing your message in a traditional advertising form and that you really care about them and the community. And so it also is a really great storytelling device. Also, our sponsors, we create incredible activations for them that are highly unique and engageable. An example is that there's a law firm, Callister & Associates, that gives free legal advice, a free legal clinic at every event. They'll do contract law. If our, for February, our... Um, 
theme was the art of romance and they did prenups, divorce law, <laughs> and you can just go get free legal advice from attorneys. Uh, that's one example. That's so cool. Yeah, so it's something that becomes really engageable. You really get to have face time with the community and it changes the way they see your business. It's not just slapping it on a billboard. Yeah. You can be a part of something where you're going to get seen by a lot of people and a chance to interact yeah. with the people. Yeah, in, well. the incredible sponsor of uh, presenting sponsor of the Kids Zone is Chuck Jones Experience. They actually pulled their entire outdoor ad spend after their first month with us um, to put it all into First Friday. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it really is. So and that's incredible. how you get free art classes. So as long as we can keep, as long as arts funding is being cut from Nevada schools and we can keep replacing it within our footprint, uh, it's something that all businesses should really look at doing. No, that's very cool. And I actually had the opportunity to talk to some different artists and people there who had booths. Perfect. Hi, my name is Lucky. I'm a local photographer with Lucky's Camera. Loving First Friday. The weather is beautiful. Everyone here is having a phenomenal time. It is huge. I've never seen so many people in one place. Just having a great time and enjoying what people are doing. I mean, it's a great social scene and yeah, I like it. Uh, we're DGR, Dead Girls and Robots. It's a collective of all three of us. Jeff Lewis. Steve Mowgli Moffitt and Dustin Hoots. Uh, first Friday for us means that we can get our art to people and expand everything we can do to a wider group, of, a wider base of audience than we can do normally. Art is meant for everyone, not the rich. We get to meet the Las Vegas community, have fun, meet a lot of people that we wouldn't normally meet online, and just be part of the community. We're so social butterflies. That's great. If there's an artist in town and they want to display something at First Friday, how do they go about that? What's the steps? Well, you would sign on to www.firstfridaylasvegas.com and there will be tabs for artists, food vendors. Uh, you have to fill out your paperwork, even if you're my mom. And once you fill out all those forms, you will be contacted. Um, everyone gets contacted back. Sometimes it can take up to three months because you can apply up to three months in advance. And so just be patient and we'll get back to you. There's a lot of people applying right now. So, yeah. No, oh, very cool. Yeah. Now, Charity, I know you're really involved in the Las Vegas social media scene. Where do you, what's your observation of the First Friday social media from what you've seen? I like that the content is uh, relevant to several different age groups. Um, I don't feel that they uh, direct it just towards, you know, one, one group. And also, there, there are several different zones within the First Friday event. You know, there's the, the Green Street and the, the Kid Zone and the Shuffle Zone and then, you know, the music and the art. But everything is all in one hub. And I, and I like that. Um, there, we, we had some discussions about creating different social media, um, you know, Facebook pages or Twitters or whatever for each uh, different zone. But at the end of the day, it's most important that we educate everybody on a wide level. And if we keep them engaged, um, you know, event wide, it's relevant to anybody. And I, I think that's amazing, you know. So my daughter could actually go on their Facebook and learn something that she probably would have not learned if she only went to, you know, the Kids Zone Facebook for First Friday. So I, I like that. And, and um they, they do a really, really good job with uh, all their social media. You can just see it growing, and people want to know more, and they're they're hungry for more community, more culture, more art. So That's awesome. So music. it seems there's something for everybody, and I don't right. ever foresee there being lack of content, just with all the artists and different things people are constantly coming up with for that. So that has to be good for you guys, too, to be able to promote all those people and you know get the word out there. And ultimately, we've got, you know, this event, there are seven core team members that are building it for 30,000 people every month. And ultimately, it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the community. And so having a channel for the community to be able to speak with us is the most important thing that we can do because we need to know how the community feels, what they want to see, if there's an educational thing that they want to see, if if something's not working for them, if something is working for them, they own it. And we need to allow them to have ownership of the community, uh, of the event. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, through social media, uh, companies are able to do, you know, free market research just based on the engagement they're getting from people. And with you guys, I'm sure you're able to get lots of great feedback to continuously improve it. Absolutely. Along the way. Yeah. So, yeah, we... Uh, Thank you so much for what all you guys do. I really, First Friday, if you have not been to it, you have to go to it. It's the first Friday in each month. 
Uh, any, where can everyone find the First Friday info? Facebook, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Pinterest? Twitter, uh, Facebook slash First Friday Las Vegas. Twitter is First Friday LV at First Friday LV. You can visit our website, firstfridaylasvegas.com. And we highly encourage engaging at all of those levels. Uh, follow us on Instagram, First Friday LV as well. Absolutely. And where can we follow you guys at? individually. I'm at Charles Ressler, R-E-S-S-L-E-R, and always feel free to use my hashtag sparkle magic. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, I'm at Charity Las Vegas uh, on Twitter, and Facebook is uh, slash Charity Faith LV. Sometimes you'll get information that you won't get from any other channel through each of our Twitters, so highly recommend following us. Right. Um, <laughs> up to the minute. <laughs> up to the minute. So you guys are constantly tweeting. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. And we're very involved in several different projects. I mean, First Friday is, is we love it, but, um, you know, we definitely are involved in a lot of other things as well. So yeah, every day we're and- hustling. <laughs> <laughs> and Charles, you actually had a bucket moment list. You want to you want to share that with us? Well, last <laughs> night I um, had the amazing opportunity to sing with at Bobby McFerrin at the spectacular at Smith Center LV. <laughs> Hashtag sparkle this. magic. I love this. He, this is perfect. He speaks Twitter language. Hashtag <laughs> top five moment <laughs> of my life. So yeah, that was incredible being able awesome. to sing with him. And it was, I don't think most people have that on their bucket list, but that was truly on mine. So the magic of Vegas. Yeah, exactly. DTLV. Hashtag DTLV. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone follow Charity, follow Charles, follow First Friday LV. Guys, thank you so much for being on today. Really love it. And I look forward to the next First Friday. Okay, Thank great. You. Thank you. Right. Thanks, guys. On the next episode of the Las Vegas Social Media Show, we have with us today media entrepreneur, content specialist, hip hop pioneer, Mr. Jonathan Schechter, aka Shecky Green. You know, if a visitor arrives here and they drive out of the airport, every billboard is like an EDM artist. You it's know? true. It's been interesting. I mean, I, sometimes my my hip hop friends, you know, kind of take offense when I try to draw comparisons between the two uh, movements, but actually I see a lot of similarities. Right. I see um, that, you know, DJing is DJing. You know, whatever genre of music you're playing, whatever it is, you still have to be a good DJ. And that's the common denominator. 